Uh, hello. Uh, final video and the bonus video in this chapter uh, will go through the process of creating the photogrammetry scan that we used in the previous videos. Uh, I'm going to show you what tools I used and how I prepared the high poly object and the texture for the baking. First, let's just have a quick chat about photogrammetry itself. Uh, if you watched the first chapter, you might remember the short guidelines that we talked about uh, when taking photos for Substance Alchemist. Well, the same rules apply here as well, just with a little bit of more complexity. For photogrammetry, generally three main things are the most important. Those three things are overlap, sharpness and consistency. For overlap, uh, if you look, for example, at these consecutive photographs that I took, you can see that there is a fairly significant amount of overlap between them, at least 50%. Basic rule of thumb when dealing with photogrammetry is that every point of the model that you want to scan needs to be visible in at least three different photographs. In practice, uh, when going around an object like this, for example, like this tree, good rule is to go around uh, in 15 degrees increments, basically having 24 images around the full circle of the tree bark. Then you move a camera up a little bit, take another circle of photographs, and so on. Here, you can see all the camera positions that I use for this scan, for example. And you can notice that only two circles were enough, uh, with less than half a meter of vertical difference. That was enough data in this use case. For the sharpness, uh, just use the sharpest camera and lens that you have. If you only have your phone, disable all the effects that you might uh, have on. Uh, shoot in RAW format if you can, but even JPEGs are going to be fine. The more sharper the images are, uh, the two benefits that you will get. One benefit is that the mesh extraction data will be sharper, and the second benefit is that the texture extraction in the end will be, will be way crispier. Third point is the consistency, and that means consistency in every way. Be consistent with the lighting setup. That's why it's best to shoot during overcast or in shade. Be consistent with your camera setup, so take the photograph straight on with the same angles. Uh, use a lower ISO sensitivity to reduce noise, but a high aperture value to increase the focus area. Set the white balance to manual and lock it. Actually lock everything, so your camera settings do not deviate from photo to photo. In case of these three, uh, I was going around and took 50 photographs, which was more than enough for what I needed. Caveat here being that I use the tool called 3 d zf 3 As you might imagine, there are many tools out there on the market for photogrammetry. Free ones and very expensive ones. Zephyr is one of the free ones that I use the most. It's very fast and precise, and the only limitation when using the free version is that you can only use up to 50 photographs. For texture scanning and doing things like this, that's completely enough. But if you want to do some more ambitious or bigger projects with, with photogrammetry, that will probably not be enough for you. Then you will need to buy the full version or use some other tools. For example, another free alternative, which doesn't have these kinds of limitations, is Meshroom from Alice Vision. But in my experience, Meshroom was both slower and less precise. That's why I chose uh, the 3D Zephyr. This is the tool that we are going to use today. I'm not going to go through the entire tool, you can find a lot of tutorials on YouTube. Uh, we are just going to use the bare minimum we need to extract the data using photogrammetry. So here in menu, under workflow, are actually all the tools that we will need today. Start with a new project, and the first prop-up is going to ask us uh, what we want to do. Make sure that Check Online for pre-computed calculations is turned on. Uh, that will hopefully recognize the camera and the lens for the photographs and automatically calibrate for any deviations. No need to check mask images and complete 3D model for now, because we will do that manually a bit later. In the next step, we just need to select and add all the photographs for this project, which you can find supplied with the tutorial series. Moving on, it will let us know if the camera calibrations preset have been found. In this case, all the images were adjusted for the Samsung Galaxy phone, which is good because it significantly improves the chances of precision extraction. Next, we will set up the camera position and alignment. In category, select close range, because I was very close to the object when I was taking these photographs. And for these presets, you have like default, fast and deep. Usually, we can keep it to default, uh, that will work most of the time. 
If the default alignment is not good enough, then we can start the process again and go with a deep preset. The thing about working with photogrammetry is that steps and processes are very heavy, processing heavy. So be prepared to spend some time waiting. Let's go with close range and for the category and default for the preset, which should be fine. Next step is just the summary of the things that we set up in previous steps. If everything is fine, just click run. The tool will then start processing, aligning and matching all the photographs into virtual cameras. This is actually the fastest process that we will go through today, but it's still going to take some time. A couple of minutes after the reconstruction of the first place is done. And as you can see, all the cameras are green, which means their positions have been successfully reconstructed. If this wasn't the case, if some of them failed, for example, on your project, then you can restart and select a more in-depth precision. Click Finish, and what we can see here in the viewport is a not-so-dense point cloud of our tree. The blue things uh, that you see around it are all the reconstructed camera angles. And if you select any image, just clicking on it, it will show you the angle of that specific camera. First step is now done, so we have the basic point cloud. Now we need to go a step further and calculate the dense one. Go again to the workflow menu, advanced, and select dense point cloud calculation, because we need to dense one to calculate the detailed mesh from it. Select all the cameras, leave the category at closed range, but as we want to extract as much details as we can from this scan, let's select the high details preset. Click next to continue. Check the summary before clicking run, and this part of the extraction is going to take a little bit longer. After some waiting, a dense point cloud is generated and we can click finish. As we can see, we have way more points than we had before. We can almost see the entire tree bar going around. The extraction looks like it's going fine, and we have the level of details that we need, so we are going to extract the mesh now. Back to the workflow menu, advanced, mesh extraction and it's going to ask us which dense point cloud we're going to use. Just select the one we just created. Make sure we are using all the cameras, in close range and with high details preset like before. Check the summary, click run, and we play the waiting game yet again. We have the extracted mesh now. Rotate it a little bit around, see what we got and check for any obvious errors. The texture looks good as well, but don't be easily fooled. This is not the image texture. All the colors that you see here are just vertex color data. So the final step is to actually generate the final textured mesh generation, which will make a mesh with UVs and an image-based texture. Use the mesh we generated in the previous step and as before, use all the cameras in the, with the general category and the high details preset. Run the process and wait for the last time. Once it's finished, we can see there is way more sharpness and details in the texture, because this is an image file generated from the photographs, not the vertex color data. And all that is left is to export what we have made. Go to Export, Export Textured Mesh, select the mesh for export, choose the OBJ uh, as a mesh option, select Export Normals, and rescale the texture to 16K, because we want all that sweet details. Make sure a single texture is selected, but there is no need for local or UDIMS. Click Export and choose the folder where we want to save all the data. And we're done! In the exported folder, you should now see our texture and the objects. So, to recap, we imported our photographs, created a point cloud, and then we generated a dense point cloud. We used that to extract the mesh, and then generated a texture and UVs for it. Out of curiosity, we can see that the mesh has almost 8 million points and around 9 million triangles, which is more than enough for our texture baking process. This is also the end of the chapter. Join me in the next chapter, where we'll be creating the third and final tree bark texture from scratch using Substance Designer. See you there.